stats. <clears throat> this is a normal distributed bell curve. So we are reviewing things. Freshie, you ready? This line, this line represents a z-score, okay? This line represents a z-score of zero, and it's the mean. So whatever the mean or the average is for a problem, it aligns with the very center of this bell curve. And remember, a bell curve represents 100% under the curve. This continuously goes to the left and the right. So if I line my pen up with this line, I could say 50% of the data points will be to the right and 50 data points will be to the left, okay? Again, I know it's been a long time since we've done this, three, four months. All right, the next thing is, each one of these lines is gonna line up right now at this point with a z-score. Do you remember hearing the terms statistically significant and insignificant? Yeah. And a lot of times students would say those, but they'd forget what it really means. Okay, so I'm going to color in right now as we review this, and you don't have to color yours in, but I'm gonna color in. This represents, if I added up everything underneath the curve, it represents 95% of all data points. 95%. So it means it's pretty common. If you're in this pink region that I have on my bell curve, it's a pretty common, um, yes, he is here, thank you. Okay, it's a pretty common occurrence. So if something is common, we say it is statistically insignificant. It's insignificant because it happens a lot, it's common. If you're to the left and to the right, and we're gonna add one more percentage here. If you're in these regions, if you could add another one here, I'm going to cross this part out, by the way, because we have a more accurate one. Can you please write 2.35% and 2.35%? Then to the right of three z-scores, we're going to write 0.15%. And to the left of negative three is going to be 0.15%. Bless you. <clears throat> so this is symmetrical. 95% statistically insignificant because it's common. Outside of that middle 95%, you have 5% left over because 100 minus 95 is 5%. You split 95% in half, this equals 2.5% and this equals 2.5%. This is 2.5% and this is 2.5%. So as review today, I want you to understand things like what is z-score, how do we make calculations, how do we find the z-score when it lands on one of these major lines or if it lands in between. So there's a couple words. One is called empirical data. And empirical data means that our life is easy. I'm going to give you an example. Ready? Let's do the first problem. Here's the first problem. I'm just going to make these things up. So in terms of them being um, truly accurate, just know that, that I'm making those up. Okay, here's the very first thing. Let's talk about newborn babies. And let's just make it up and say in Asia, assuming that newborn ba babies in Asia may be naturally a little bit smaller. Okay, so newborn babies in Asia, we're gonna say uh, the average or the mean for a newborn baby is 6.5 pounds. And the standard deviation, I'm gonna abbreviate, standard deviation is 1.5 pounds. Nobody is going to say to you, hey, go up to the top and fill this out. Nobody's gonna say that to you. Okay, but you wanna do that. Remember the mean lines up with the middle. So above this, we're gonna write 6.5. As you go to the right, whenever you hit one of these major lines, you're gonna add a standard deviation in this increment. So you'll help me out here. 6.5 and 1.5 is eight. So this is eight. 8 plus another 1.5 is 9.5. 9.5 plus 1.5 is 11. So here are the increments to the right, and I'm going to do the exact same thing going to the left. Subtract 1.5 to get 5. Subtract 1.5 to get 3.5. Subtract 1.5 to get 2. On a scale from 1 to 5, 5 being the greatest and 1 being the lowest, can you please let me know how well do you understand filling out 
the normal distribution curve based on the mean and standard deviation, one to five right now. Okay, so now we're gonna start with some questions. Remember, this is empirical. It means life is easy when it fits on an empirical curve. Okay, ready? If I said to you, I'll do two, then you will practice with you. If I said to you, find the z-score of five pounds. So here's what you do. You find five pounds. Oh, it's on one of the major lines. Remember, it's easy when it's empirical. Five pounds, you go straight down below. The z-score is negative one problem done. If I said find the z-score of 9.5, okay, 9.5, oh, the answer is two. Z-score is two. One to five, how well are we understanding that? Note this, they're only going to give you data like this. They're not going to say form it to a curve, and they're just going to say, like, what is the z-score of 2.0? What is the z-score of 2.0 pounds? And your answer would be what? Negative 3, right? It has a z-score of negative 3. They're never going to tell you to put it on a curve. You have to know how to do that, all right? So keeping with this curve right now, our next question is going to be this. Find the percentage of newborn babies in Asia that weigh, let's write this down, that weigh at least 3.5 pounds. Now the key is the word at least. Brian, help me out. If you make at least $10 per hour at your job, does that mean you're making $10 or less or $10 or more? Okay, so I'm going to find, thank you, I'm going to find 3.5, and he said more. So I know more is to the right. So, again, empirical is easy. So I want to add up everything to the right. Now let's use some common sense. What is this whole region here? 95. What's this region? 2.5. So you can use a calculator at this point if you need to, but what's 95 plus 2.5? 97.5. Okay, here's your next one. Writing this down, please. We are now going to find the percentage of Asian newborn babies that weigh less than five pounds. Less than five pounds. Okay, so I'm going to go up above. I'm going to go up to the top here. I'm going to find five, and less than means I'm going to go to the left. I know this is 2.5, and here I have 13.5. So either you can do it in your head or grab a calculator and add those together, please. 2.5 and 13.5 gives you what percentage? 16%. 16%. Okay, here's your next one. I want to find the percentage of newborn babies in Asia that weigh between 3.5 pounds and 11 pounds. 3.5 to 11 pounds. With your partner, feel free to use the calculator if you need to. You can see percentages. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to get an answer. Go ahead. answer. Here's my 3.5 and here's my 11. So I want to add up everything in between. I know this is automatically 95. So I'm going to go 95 plus 2.35. So 97.35%. How, how many of you had that? Hands up high. Okay, again, this is empirical. They're not going to use the word empirical, the empirical rule, but the reason why, bless you, the reason why all of this has been pretty easy is everything that we're working with lands on these major marks, correct? So just for practice, here's what's going to happen next. We're going to do the exact same problem, but I'm going to switch up the mean and the standard deviation. You'll create your own graph, and then you'll answer questions and we'll go over them, okay? 
just as a review. So you ready? Nobody's gonna say make this graph. You have to know to do that. When I'm getting ready, please draw your new graph. We'll use the same concept just for practice. So the weights of newborn Asian babies are normally distributed with a mean of 6.2 pounds and a st standard deviation of 1.8 pounds. You're going to work on this with your partner. You're going to answer the, the next three questions, okay? So first do your graph and then work with your partner, please. As I walk around, I want to hear you working with your partner. I apologize for my handwriting being so sloppy. Okay, working with your partner. Begin. Two to three minutes, and I'll go over these.
ensure that we can get through enough problems, I'm going to have you stop. We're going to go over this together. Are they going to provide you with a normal distributed bell curve? No, but what they are supposed to provide you with is blank scratch paper or scratch paper that has um, graph paper on it. Won't have a bell curve. My personal uh, opinion is when you get your test booklet, I don't know if you can write in your test booklet or scratch paper only. I'm not sure about that. I would do this. I would draw this curve, and as long as you know these four percentages, you know it's, it's symmetrical. So if you can get the ones on the right, you're good. So 34, 13.5, remember this is 2.35% and 0.15%. Okay, remember the end behavior continues to go to the right and to the left. All right, so the average is 6.2. You guys are going to help me so I can go a little bit quicker here. Do you have 8 here? Yeah. Um, 9.8 and... Okay, going backwards, 6.4. Or 4.4? I said it, wrote it down, but I said it wrong. And um, 2.6? And what is this one? Okay, so obviously that doesn't seem so accurate, but I'm just making up a problem here. I just want to do this so that when we're reviewing, it's been a long time, you remember. This is in the middle 95%. It's statistically insignificant. It occurs often. These end portions together make up 5%. Statistically significant does not occur very often. Okay, here we go. Find the z-score for 11.6. Okay, 11.6 is right here. Z-score is positive 3 done. Hands up high if you understand that. Why is this easy? Because each one of the problems we do, the numbers land on these major lines, right? It's called the empirical rule. It makes life easy. Okay, going on to part B. Find the percentage of babies that weigh at least... 2.6 pounds and Brian previously helped us with this term at least so I find 2.6 at least means we're gonna go greater and to the right so when I add this up let's use common sense now you could add up each one of these percentages it takes a little bit longer we know that this portion is 95 this portion is 2.5 so you end up with 97.5 percent can you raise your hand if you had that one correct just so I know where we are okay going on to part C Find the percentage of babies that weigh no more than 8 pounds. So here's your 8 pounds. No more means everything that's less than it, or it could have said less than 8 pounds. So I want to add up everything here. This is not a complete 95 percentile. So I'm going to add up 2.5, 13.5, and 64, or 68. Has anybody done that and they can share with me? What would you get, Andres? 88.4. 88.4? 84% exact? Can you raise your hand if you agree with Andres? 84%. Okay? No more than was our key. Okay, now this last one. Find the percentage of babies that weigh between 2.6 and 8 pounds. So between, I'm going to add these together. So 34, 34, and 13.5. So that's 68 and 13.5. 81.5? 81.5%. I'm going to ask you one more question, but before I do that, I'd like you to check with your partner to see if they have any questions or if you have any questions they can answer. Go ahead. With your partner, whoever's taller, I want you to read this, read my messy writing for part E, and then together solve that. Taller person reads, work together, one minute go. <laughs> that is one heck of a baby that weighs 50 pounds with game. That poor mother, she didn't make it to birth. 
childbirth was <laughs> killed her. <laughs> okay, you ready? Look here, and I want you to put your finger at a z or put the finger where 5.0 lands. Z square of negative one. So what percentage of babies out of the 400? We're going to make a prediction. Excuse me, not not what percent. What? How many of the 400 babies can we expect to weigh more than 5.0? Correct. Mm -hmm. So first, we need to figure out the percentage. We know this is 2.5. We know this is 64 or 68 plus 13.5. So grab a calculator. And you're going to go 34, 34, 13.5, and 2.5. You have five seconds to get that percentage to go. 84, exactly? So 84% of the babies we can expect to be greater than 5%. So 84%, and we're going to take that times 400. Now remember, when you plug in a percentage, what do you actually have to write it as? A decimal. So 0.84 times 400. Anthony, what is your answer? What is it? Okay, well, let's check and see. I agree, 336 babies. Hands apply if you're understanding. Okay, here's your very last one. You're not going to write anything down on paper. You're only going to answer this with your partner. Are you ready? Here we go. 95 percent of all babies born in Asia, according to this information, weigh between 3.5 and 9.5 pounds. Are we comfortable with that? I want to go over this again. Are they going to say to you, this is the empirical rule and it's really easy? No. So I'm going to show you next, how do you know when you have to use a calculator to solve or how do you know when it's easy like this? Okay, you're going to be able to notice real quick. Okay, I want you to draw another graph like this with your percentages while I get the next problem ready. Okay, again, I'm just making up this data. This is not truly accurate. Here we go. The weights of newborn babies in the United States are normally distributed with a mean of 7.5 pounds and a standard deviation of 1.3 pounds. Before I go any further, what do you want to do? What should you do next? Over the top. Yep, do the top. Go ahead. They're not going to tell you to do this. You have to know that. Bless you. Okay, you ready? Help me out. Well, Keem, do you have the numbers? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you go to the right? Go ahead. Nine. Hold on. Nine? Nine. 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 Nine
Okay, let's go. Okay, let, okay. How, why do we let freshmen in this class? Seriously. Okay, Deandra, help me out. 8.8. Okay, you know, Kim, I'm joking with you. Go ahead. Okay, going back the opposite way. Amy, go ahead. Okay. Cool. What's the next one? Okay, is everybody comfortable? Here's your first problem. Find a Z-score for 5.5 pounds. So hold on here. Ah. Okay, so listen closely. This is not using the empirical rule, and here's the way, here's how you know. After you do this graph, if they ask for any information with a data point that does not land on these lines, it's not a lot of work because we could use a calculator, but it's different. So do you agree 5.5 point, 5 would be somewhere in here? Okay, so here we go. So when it does not give you that, if it doesn't land on the lines, here's the formula. This is a review. Maybe you should write this down. So z-score is the data point, subtract the mean or average over the standard deviation. So the data point I asked for was 5.5, the mean for this problem is 7.5, and the standard deviation is 1.3. Please calculate it and do not say the answer out loud. How many of you have a negative answer? How many of you have an answer like I do? Now that makes sense. Watch this. Negative 1.5. Remember, that's your z-score. So negative 1.5 would be right here. Do you agree that that's approximately 5.5 up above? Okay. So if they told you to round to the nearest tenth, it would be negative 1.5. Read the directions closely, okay? Does anybody have questions for me about that? Let's practice one more. Find the z-score. Find the z-score of 10 pounds. Is that z-score going to be positive or negative? Positive because it's to the right of the mean. Remember to use parentheses if you're going to do it in all of one operation. Who is approximately 1.9? 1.9 z-score. Okay. Okay, here's a better question. Turn to your partner. I need the answer and your reasoning. Without reason, it means nothing. Do we consider the data point of 10 pounds to be statistically significant or insignificant? Explain. Go. All right. So here is a z-score of 1 point. I'm talking. Here's a z-score of 1.9 pounds because it lies in the middle 95 percentile or between negative two and two standard deviations from the middle, we would say it's statistically insignificant. It's common, it's in the middle. What if I said a z, sorry, what if I said uh, a weight of 11 pounds? Well, let's just look. 11 pounds would be between two and three, which means it's outside of the middle, so we'd say it's statistically significant. Great job. Okay, here's the next one. Find the percentage of all babies born in the United States that weigh at least, so here's your first problem, that weigh at least 6.5 pounds. Now don't do anything. So here's where you should see, you should start to feel confusion. Because the first thing you do is you go 6.5, you go, holy crap, that's not on the line, what do I do? Right, does everybody see that? We're gonna use the calculation for that. Now here's what I need you to understand, there's two things. You're going to sing for us, Andres? <laughs> do, you, do you want to turn on your calculator in just a second? Good, Andres. Okay, at least, does at least say that 6.5 is the lowest or the highest weight? Lowest. So I know that 6.5 is going to be the lowest, and I want to go everything that's greater than it. So I need you to grab the calculator. And there's three keys we're going to hit. Second, then hit the button that says VARS, great memory for some of you, and go down to normal. CDF. Now there's four things you're going to type in. 
it's going to be the small number, comma, the large number, comma, the mean, comma, and the standard deviation, end parentheses. So we know the smallest number because it says at least is going to be 6.5. Now hit a comma. Now we want to do your favorite extremely large number. So uh, mine is 1,005. Just put, pick that out, okay? So do a large number, comma. For this particular problem, the mean is 7.5, comma, and the standard deviation is 1.3, end parentheses. Let's think about common sense and predict. I said 6.5, correct? Yes or no? So to me, 6.5 is right about here. Let's think about this. I mean, actually, this is really important. My last period did not get this. I want everything that's greater than this. So here's my common sense. You ready? I'm talking. Do you agree that this is 50% of the curve? Yes or no? Yeah. So it's greater than 50%, and in fact, it's even more than 50%. So notice that this entire range is 34. I'm going to guess that like this is 20% here. I'm just guessing. So I'm going to guess it's going to be somewhere around between 70 and 80%. Because here's 50%. There's 34% that takes up this interval, and it's a pretty good portion of it. So in my mind, I'm thinking, hey, I should have something that's close to probably 80% or 70 to 80%. Press Enter. If you had to round, it would be 77.9%. How many of you were able to get this calculation on your calculator? Press Clear. You're going to try another one on your own. <clears throat> Two things I want you to do. You got to listen. Your first thing is I want you to turn to your partner and make a prediction. Because you want to see do your predictions match your answers so you know if you're in the right range. Make a prediction and then actually do the calculations with your partner. Here we go. You ready? What percentage of babies born in the United States weigh no more than nine pounds. Stop, put your calculator down, make a prediction with your partner first, and then do it. Go. No more than nine pounds. Ready? I'm going to call on somebody else to see if you agree. Andres, I don't want you to change your answer. Listen closely. I heard Andres say, we know he's a smart kid. Andres said to his partner, I think it's going to be about 75%. Do you agree or disagree, Anissa? Okay, and Anissa, what do you think? Okay, she thinks higher. Kevin, do you agree it should be higher than that? And why? honesty. Cortez. Don't okay. overthink this, Cortez. Just, you're looking at percentages. Yeah, I think it should be higher than 70% because on the left side you already have the 50. Yep. So he's, hold on, I'm going to do this. He says, hey, we already have 50 here, so I have 50 and right now in my prediction, okay? And then you already have the 34. Okay, so 50 and 34 is 84. We're already down on 34. So we're up to 84 right now, and then we have a little bit more than that. Is that what you're thinking, Cortez? Yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking somewhere maybe closer to 90, 84 to 90, okay? Or we're actually greater than 84. Okay, ready? Do it on your calculator right now, go. Now, I haven't told you how to do this. Let's see what your memory is like. Nine, yes. Ten seconds remaining. I'm hearing good mathematical dialogue. Okay, we're going to give you an additional five seconds. Now look at this. I want you to think about this before I call on anybody. Okay, you ready? Here we go. 
So I said nine. And we're doing everything up to nine. So nine is going to be the large number. So this number is nine. For this particular problem, this is 7.5. For this particular problem, this is 1.3. Can you raise your hand if you understand how I came up with those three numbers? Now we need to choose a very small number. Okay, so I'm going to choose a number that's like my favorite negative number. So here we go. I'm going to do second plus 712. Get started here. And I'm going to do second vars normal CDF. So my favorite negative number is negative 999. Okay, I'm just choosing a, a larger negative number. It goes up to 9 pounds. That's my high number. We have a mean of 7.5. And we have, oops. And we have a standard deviation of 1.35 pounds. And now if I'm going to round this, it would be approximately 87.5% or 87.6%. Okay? Thumbs up or thumbs down right now? Tough stuff. Okay? Here's your next one. Clear your calculator. <clears throat> Find the percentage of babies, and you may work with your partner, find the percentage of babies born in the United States that weigh between six to eight pounds. So here's the first thing you should do. You figure out later how to do it. But six to eight, point, six to eight pounds, does six land on one of the nice lines? No. Automatically, you know, you're going to use your calculator then, okay? You're going to be using this formula. Go. No. Yeah, what is that one? Diagnostics on is when we do, oh, gotcha. Diagnostics on is when we did the very beginning of this, um, is when we, I gave you a bunch of data points, and we want to test, is it going to be cubic quadratic, and we use diagnostics on to look at the R squared value. That? Good memory, Andres. Okay, what do you have for an answer, um, Anthony? 52.5. Do you agree with that, Kalel? You do. Does anybody want me to go over how to get this? Okay, you guys are doing great. You ready? I want you to make a new curve. We're running down in time here. Make a new curve. Now, I also want to share with you what I would do. So as you know, I can be kind of sloppy and lazy sometimes. Here's personally what I would do. I would take time, if everybody can look up here for just one second, I would draw the curve nice the first time. And you may have three to four problems that are like this. I don't know what exactly is going to be on your test. I personally would do this. When it came time for the next problem, I would just cross out these things up top, and then I would go ahead and write the next problem on top. And then cross out these points. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Now, if you really like to be neat, go ahead, because you will get scratch paper and draw a new curve. I'll give you another 30 seconds to draw your curve. All right, here's your problem. I'm just going to make this up. So I'm going to do it based on the height of my son. I know my, my son is very tall for his height. Um, he's going to probably be like a Lorenzo in height. Um, so, what, you're, <laughs> did you just hear that, Lorenzo? He said, hopefully not a waste of height. Lorenzo, <laughs> this is going to be an all-girl fight. You know there's going to be hair being pulled. <laughs> That's right. Okay. 
man, you're funny. Now, if you just be here every day, that'd be great. Talking to you, Carlos. Okay. So here's your here's your problem. Again, you're going to change your percentages. I got these online. This is a 2.35 and a 0.15. Your problem is this. I'm making this up. I'm going to say at one years old in the United States, the average one year old boy has a height of 26.5 inches. And I'm going to say that the standard deviation for height is 1.1 inches. Draw your graph. Okay, here's what I want you to test. I want you to take your calculator right now and I want you to put it upside down on, on your desk. Literally put it upside down. If you think you need to use this formula, and i have been looking right now, if you think you need to use this formula to complete the problem, you'll grab your calculator and do it. If you think you can do it just based on percentages, you'll leave your calculator tipped upside down. Does that make sense to you? Okay, mm -hmm. here we go. What percent of U.S. born one-year-old male children are at least 27.6 inches tall. What percent of U.S. born one-year-old boys are at least 27.6 six inches tall. Kevin, I heard you speak. What was your answer, Kevin? 16%. Do you agree or disagree, Nick? Okay, great. So Nick says I'm not quite done yet. Um, Kevin, can you explain to Nick how you came up with that answer and then we'll see if he agrees with you. But there's actually even a, a bigger key here, Kevin. You're probably right with this, but the first key is I want to know is do you have to use a calculator, Kevin? No. Why don't you have to use a calculator? <laughs> because the point lands on a line, meaning that it's empirical. It means life is easy. Okay, keep going, Kevin. So at least means everything has to be greater. So I'm hearing you say you're going to add up all these points. Yeah. So you're going to take 2.5 and add up to 13.5 and you'll come up with 16%. Nick, does that make sense to you? Okay, on a one to five, can you tell me right now where you guys sit with that understanding? One to five. Okay, put your calculator upside down again. Brian, pay attention, I'm calling you next. Okay, are you ready? What percent of US born one year old male weigh no more than 25 pounds? Oh, have a great day guys. Yeah. <laughs>